Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this week's video of uh, Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And where should we begin? Well, let's have a, there's a big pile of uh, memory cards flowing down the belt over here. And this is because one of the things that happened in the last video was that Tristan decommissioned a lot of the um, a lot of the science stuff that was going on over here. So you'll see this is where we used to have all of the the sort of the the Energy One production facility that I just kind of botched into place because um, we needed to get it up and running in order to then get the rails available in order to then start building things up properly on a, with a decent setup like this. So he's pulled all of that up, and one of the things he's doing is emptying all of the um, all of the memory cards that were along here out onto this disposal belt to pass them back out to be then recycled and go back around the system again. And that's because there's nothing else further down here that actually requires these memory cards. In fact, the last thing that actually needs them is here, where we're making the machine learning data in order to then turn it into these two science packs and possibly. Yes, and this and the optimization science pack as well. So that means all of that can now be got rid of. We can then get rid of all of these belts along here. All of that is completely unnecessary. And we're just neatly gra and gradually pouring it out onto, onto the bus. And that means it can then flow backwards up the bus, all the way along to here, where it can then go underneath here, and it'll pass down into the recycling area and be passed out in, in, in the train again. So this is part of this this will be um, part of the reason we're suddenly going to have an enormous number of these memory cards available. But even as it is, we've got twenty thousand available here, and so as I touched on yesterday, this has now stopped and, and we're just and we're uh, just waiting for more recycled ones to come around again for us to reuse. Of course, as we start to run out of those or when this train goes and comes back again, we'll make a few more, but for the time being, we've got plenty of them available. However, the interesting part of what's been going on over here is slightly for, is, is over here somewhere in the middle. The main the main push that Tristan's been up to in the in the last episode, and that was getting uh, the tier two energy science catalogs almost up and running. So he's got the um, the what this is sort of wibbly data, quantum phenomenon data being made. He's got the football data being made, which is apparently subatomic data. Uh, he's got the uh, London Eye data, the also known as force field data, being being produced. The only one that he's missing is this uh, atomic data, and that's because he needs the material testing packs. And you'll remember from uh, the last video that um, those are the ones, those are things over here that uh, Mike has just started making at the right at the end of the last stream. And so we're still waiting for this uh, railway station to be put in here. So, but then once that is there, the, the uh, material testing packs can be picked up from there, brought over here, and dropped off somewhere in Tristan's. Um, collection of stations of doom and then pass down presumably down this but i don't know there's there are belts yes yes down this belt and then across into here to be made into that data so that's coming quite coming along quite nicely and that should mean that relatively soon in the in uh, next week's stream or tomorrow's stream as it's also known we should find that uh, tristan is very very quickly producing the these um energy science two packs and then over here in the science area, I'm going to have to do a little bit of expansion of the um, of the energy science over here, in much the same way I did with the uh, material, or haven't actually properly finished with the material science by the looks of it. And then we'll be able to start making the the uh, tier two science packs out of those as well. And that's going to be really good for for many reasons. One, because obviously having those um, science packs available means we'll be able to um, do do far more science and, and research far more interesting things. But also because um, having the having the tier two packs going into all of the all of these machines that are making the insights means we'll be able to churn out far more insights for the same number of packs coming in. And I think I touched on that in the last video as well. But we're going to get a lot more of these available, and we're going to we, therefore we'll be able to produce more significant data and things will just get better and better as we develop more and more technologies around here so this is looking really promising we're going to get yes things things are whilst there's there's rather a lot of significant data queuing up on the bus here eventually that'll battle back up but this will this will make it a lot easier to make more of it and we should be able to start getting the science a bit more effectively He's also improved uh, the copper supply over to here because that was lacking before. So presumably that means there's a delivery cannon somewhere that's lobbing massive quantities of it up here. And so now we, you can see we've got plenty of it coming down here. And this, these belts have all backed up probably because... Oh no, I was going to say because we've got enough of all of these. But no, it looks like uh, Tristan is also having a, a shortage of cold thermofluid. So maybe that means he needs another train load to be brought in. Maybe it means there's some, some other problem with the system. But... Basically, yeah, there are some issues here, and I suspect it's down to... Oh, no, these tanks are full. This one's... Yeah, I think he, much like I was saying I did yesterday, I think he needs far more of these radiators, because, yes, there's there's none in here. We've got no... Well, very, very little cool thermofluid in here, which means these machines aren't running, and there's none, so there's none of the cold. So, yeah, in essence, he needs a lot more radiators to churn through the um, all of the, the, the 100,000 100, thermofluid that's in this tank here, because he's got plenty of it. It's just not getting processed down into the colder stuff. So that's going to be a relatively easy fix. 
Uh, he's also got more rare metals coming up in much the same way. So these will all be being delivered from Norvis, I expect, where there's basically an infinite supply of them. Uh, he's probably done what I was talking about last week and, and, uh, and, and implemented a system over here. So let's, let's look at this one. Yes, there's minus 111 is on on the um, uh, on on this combinator here, and that means that that means he can then request from Norvis when it gets down to below. What is it below a uh, hundred? I guess, and requ request from other places when it gets below zero, and that means he'll always have some some available from Norvis. So it should, in theory, should never run out. But if there's um, but we'll also be requesting from the other planets first, which means they won't need to ship the uh, rare metals to Norvis and then back up here, because because double handling is just a waste of delivery cannon capsules. Similarly, over here, we've got the exactly the same sort of thing going on with the rare metals for the clouds. So those are being brought up over here. We've got, again, we've got the same minus 111. So there's, a, there's another place that's sending them over to here and then being topped up by the supply from Norvis. And that means these can be passed down here and we can make as many as much ion stream as we need. These machines are all basically running flat out, I suspect. Let's see. Yes, we've got full full on plasma stream. So probably all of these are running because these uh, these pipes are empty. We are still, we have now, in fact, completely refueled the spaceship. And so this is just being passed over into the station over here. And once that eventually fills up, then these machines can go idle. But at the moment, yeah, I'd say over here, it looks like all of the uh, the cloud production is going quite well. And um, and all the cloud, st the cloud storage over here is gradually filling up. So that's all going really well. Oh, he's, he's also mentioned, uh, speaking of the, um, the area up here, we've got all these pipes which have got cold thermofluid fluid in them and we don't have a good way of disposing of this um, and there's nothing else that requires it because these sciences over here this one in particular only requires cool thermofluid so we've got some stuff along here that's been chilled even further by these hypercoolers and yeah nothing needs it so we're going to have to try and decide what a nice way of disposing of that would be. I mean, we could just rip all the pipes up and just and just vent the stuff to. I was going to say vent to atmosphere, but there isn't any atmosphere, so just just vent it into into the cold hard vacuum of space. But that feels wasteful. Um, there's 7.6 thousand thermofluid in here, which isn't an enormous amount, but given how short we are of thermofluid, it does feel like a bit of a waste to just ditch it. Maybe we could pipe it over to you could probably pipe it over to here actually if we pump it through and put it into well this pipe then it'll eventually get used by these these machines here for uh, for, for producing the insights and then it'll go around and get back into the rest of the system from there so i suspect that's probably going to be the easiest and most sensible way to get rid of it even if it is a bit weird running a pipe from here across to here so maybe we'll do that Ah, so it looks like Tristan has been um, having issues due to the thermofluid production here, hogging all of the chemical gel. So he's added in some um, conditions down here, so that the um, so that this pump will only run when there's more than a certain amount in here. I think. Let's have a look. Yeah. So it will only if if um, if the thermofluid is greater than 61,000, it outputs a P. The P gets passed over to here, and this machine will then. Um, uh, will, will then run. Alternatively, down here, he's watching to see if there's a shortage of thermofluid in these tanks. So if there's less than 61,000 here, then it will then it outputs a P and it will run. So the idea is this will this will run if there's less than a train load of thermofluid here, or if there's more than a train load of chemical gel in here. And that means that when this when these tanks get to above 60,000. So therefore, enough to fill a train up. It will then allow these tanks to fill up a bit to a train load before we start passing more round. So the thermofluid will still take priority, at least until the point where we have a station, a train's worth in the station. But once we get to that point, we'll stop wasting. Wasting is the wrong word because we do need all of the thermofluid eventually. But we will then also try and stockpile a little bit of the chemical gel here so that the train can come along and pick it up, at least partly in order to allow him to take it off over here to make clouds from. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, it means we, we can buffer loads and loads of thermofluid and chemical gel in these tanks when there's low demand for both of them. But it means we'll work up to having a train load of each one first before we then move on to the other ones. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, it's not going to cause any. Pro it's not going to make the. It's not probably not going to make the thermofluid made any slower because at the moment there's so much demand for it. This station basically never gets a chance to fill up. But it will also. Uh, but it does mean that once we do catch up with it, we'll then be able to stockpile a decent amount of chemical gel. So that's that's probably that's a good thing. He was going to increase the chemical gel production, which would be the obvious thing to do. But then he spotted the same problem I was I was talking about quite a lot in the last stream, where there's a, such a shortage of petroleum gas here that even with all of the improvements I've made to the rate it's being brought up, so there's now, as you saw previously, there's three delivery cannons down on Norvis bringing it up here. We're just ripping through it at such a rate that we we, we, we can't get caught up here. It, it, it's crazy. So until we, I, I suspect until we get spaceships and better ways of shipping stuff around, we're probably going to be struggling a bit around here. Um, that said, we've got enough to to sort of to limp on with it. We haven't run out completely, uh, or we're not we're not suffering completely. There's there's a bit of it coming through, but it's a bit slower than we would like it to be. He's also pretty, uh, boosted production of various of the uh, the streams over here. So we've got more 
more plasma stream, so a huge number of machines making that. Uh, proton stream is this one. These are put in a train for it as well. And more mirrors being made as well, apparently. So that's uh, these machines here. So these are hopefully running a bit faster. Except there seems to be a shortage of whatever's supposed to be on here. Yes, we are still very, very short of low density structures, just in general across the entire factory. So I think fairly high on our to-do list for um, for Monday should be to try and create some more low density structures because we just they just don't seem to be enough and if I look back up here I bet there's yeah there's there's none on this but on this um, belt here either so yeah that's that's probably our current biggest crisis is that we just don't seem to have the low density structures for everything we're trying to build um, Mark has also been trying to make more mirrors, so he's got a second machine over here trying to build them and uh, in order to make more and more and more and more and more, more solar panels, but apparently we've got enough. I don't understand what's going on here. So he's got a system that passes them over into into here. Oh, and then if there's more Ah, right, so it waits until there's more than ten in these in these chests and then dumps them out onto the belt here to be taken off to the rocket to take down to back down to Norvis. Okay, so why are you not running? You're not running because oh, you've run out of the advanced solar panels, which are not being which are also being gradually shipped up from Norvis, but we don't seem to have any of those at the moment. Okay, so we do have quite a lot of solar panels, both up here and down on Norvis, but you can never really have enough of them, so he's trying to make more and more and more and more. <laughs> so, okay. His other big thing up on Norvis was to bring over a rocket full of the Vitamilange extract, and that allowed me to uh, to make some more advanced... Um, so, uh, some more advanced productivity modules that I could then put in the, in the lab over here. So uh, we're now up to... We're using tier 4 productivity modules, and that means we've got a productivity boost of plus 60%, which actually isn't, doesn't feel like that much, but I guess it's 10% it's, it's per module, so I don't know. I'm, I'm obviously a bit greedy, because in the previous game I had, I had it up at about at least plus 100%, so we must have gone, I must have gone up to at least but maybe tier 8 modules in that. I don't know, but basically, because everything, all of your resources basically feed into trying to make... Um, trying to make science packs as, as fast as possible having maximum um, productivity modules in here is going to save you so much resource in the, in the long run that you just want to have this is the most important most important place to have the best modules you can okay so that's Norvis let's have uh, Norbit let's have a look down on Norvis because there's, there's been some stuff happening down here as well uh, Mark has been expanding a building a massive solar field over here uh, his plan in the long run is to uh, is to is to uh, um, is to then put in some steam battery systems as well to allow us to, to allow the system, the, uh, the factory to carry on running overnight, and hopefully that will then allow us to decommission some of some of these systems, the uh, the free power from from biomethanol systems, uh, and doing that will allow us to. Um, hopefully save quite a lot of UPS because you'll notice at the moment we seem to be running at about 35 UPS that's only slightly better than half speed so that's pretty terrible um, and yeah I'd like to have a little bit more uh, <laughs> a little bit more performance a little bit and I'd like things to happen a little bit quicker than that if we possibly can uh, he sorted out the pollution on the copper bus down here that I mentioned last time that was caused by uh, one of these chests over here. It was previously a yellow chest and it didn't have the filter set up. Now it looks like, yes, it looks like he's gone through and replaced every single chest down here with a green chest. So now we shouldn't have any more problems. We can just request, we can request the stuff to be brought in. We can have a little bit, little bits of it fed into the chest from from the belts to keep it topped up, and we can just keep the uh, keep the bus running nicely. But if there's ever any excess that gets dumped out into the into the chest of shame over here, that can then be pulled out and put into the into the uh, in, in, into the green chests over here, and hopefully, and green chests are a bit smarter than yellow chests. They don't. If you forget to set the, um, the the request on them, then they don't just accept random things. So this should be should be a lot better. But I guess we'll see how that goes in the future. Um, he's boosted the scrap processing. Did I mention that yesterday I, or last time? I don't remember. But yeah, we've got a lot more scrap processing going on over here because there was a lot of scrap coming down, coming through from making the uh, the memory card substrates. But that seems that seems to have calmed down a bit now. But I think we want to keep all of this here for next time. There's a massive surge of it. And also, he did some expansion over. <laughs> so while he was while he was doing building the uh, solar panels up here, we had some issues with uh, with bots flying from wherever it is there was they were picking the. Um, uh, the, the 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 solar panels up from down here, flying up across this way, and then somehow they were coming over this way, and I'm not sure why that was. Maybe it was repairing the wall up here, uh, but they were coming out, flying out over this area, and they were getting shot down by um, shot down by spitters. So we've uh, had to had to do a little bit of expansion. That's why there's now lots and lots of nuclear scars all this over this area because um, well because Mark happened to it, and we've got a, a nice big um, extra section of wall coming around here. So we've claimed quite a large area. There is a core mark, a core seam in it, so we could go out and start mining that one um there is some mineral water that nobody cares about some rare metals that we don't care about a bit of copper only a couple of million though so that's not a great deal uh, there's some oil down there that might be worth having 
but yeah, gen and a little bit there as well. 3.6 million, not too bad. So there's a, there's a few few uh, minor resources in here, but not a huge amount. Oh, and there's another um, core seam there. So that's that's expanded the the uh, base out a little bit. But that's essentially we're trying to make sure that we don't accidentally have a uh, have convex no sorry concave bits on the base because that tends to lead to bots flying. Trying to take shortcuts over no man's land and getting destroyed. Mark has also been working on um, a, 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 a design for a better Immersite production facility, and that's because you, you may remember from last week the one on Taishikuten is kind of stalled. Uh, why is it stalled this time? Most actually now it's stalled because we've got enough, so that's that's acceptable. But previously it was stalled because there was too much sand. It was backed up all the way to here, and there was too much sand because down here um, the sand wasn't the the, uh, the sand wasn't being shipped out as fast as it was being produced. So this this warehouse had filled up completely, and then backed up all the way along this belt, all the way up into the Immersite processing area. In order to fix that. I put in this chest here as a as a buffer, and so that filled up with uh, several thousand uh, glass. At the moment we've got seven, so it's been about eight thousand glass in there. So yeah, we filled filled that up with glass to put to, to allow it to pull a bit more through to get the sand running again. And then, more importantly, we switched the priority on the delivery cannon capsule system here. So before they were coming, they were being made here from the uh, from the core chunks, as you're probably familiar with. Um, fed through all this machine which is making making the um, delivery cannon capsules they would then come down here and before we had them prioritized to come out this way because we wanted to ship the vulcanite out as a high priority uh, that was a bit dumb unfortunately it worked for a while but then we got greedy so what we need to do is we need to first pass the delivery cannons around this way in order to ship out all of these excesses so they get to get rid of the um, all of the excesses of well anything we've got from along here Mostly the uh, m mostly the glass that's made from the sand. That was the most important thing. So we can get rid of that, and then once that eventually backs up, then we can then start to pass through delivery cannon capsules this way in order to start shipping out vulcanite, uh, yeah, vulcanite and or, and the immersite to the various places. Now I suspect this probably isn't going to work either, because I strongly suspect we're going to eventually fill oh, we're going to fill this warehouse up with vulcanite. Maybe, but that's going to take a very very long time. So the big question is. Is this warehouse going to fill up before we've managed to get rid of all of this stone and sand through the delivery cannons over here and therefore and allow the delivery cannon capsules to back up all the way to here and therefore we're going to start to allow them through this way and to start shipping other things out? I honestly don't know. But the upshot of all of this is that we don't have any, we don't have a supply of Immersite being sent out to any of the other planets at the moment. We're just producing... Um, We've got, just got it backed up and there's no delivery cannon capsules to ship it out. So that's why we didn't have any of the advanced solar panels. And that's going to cause lots of other problems throughout the rest of the factory because no Immersite. So, yes, but in order to fix this problem, Mark is working on producing Immersite somewhere else. And we can sort of, at that point, we can kind of forget about this pla this planet and, and maybe, maybe just delete it in order to save some UPS. Because we already have Vulcanite being produced in much larger quantities over here on Agnea. Um, as you can see, that's flowing through. Merrily. Actually, all of this has stopped. We've got, we've got full. We're full of uh, delivery cannon capsules. We've got full vulcanite on all of these belts, and we're gradually filling this warehouse up. So actually, it seems that everywhere has all the vulcanite it needs at the moment, which I feel is uh, quite impressive and quite an achievement. Uh, but the system is running generally quite nicely. We just uh, so all of the vulcanite can be shipped out from here whenever we need it. We don't actually need Taishikuten anymore, except for for the Immersite. And so once we start producing the Immersite somewhere else, we can just forget about this planetoid completely, and then, and uh, sorry, forget about Taishikuten completely, and maybe even just go in and and and, uh, and delete it um, because we're going to and that'll sort of hopefully save some UPS. Back to uh, Norvis again, and and then let, let's be speaking of Tristan once more. So he uh, he fixed the clog of the trains over here. Apparently the the problem arose because the train delivered while the rocket was on its way, while the rocket was still being built, or while it was travelling, I think. Um, and so that caused that caused it to break, and then that, that was why we had copper or uh, sorry copper ingots backed up all the way along here and not being shipped through to the rocket that requested them. Um, because when the rocket's in transit, you don't know it, uh, the system doesn't know about that copper anymore. So you don't you it, it'll be it, it'll be as if there's it's missing, and therefore another train got got requested and by the time the train got here the the copper that was in, in, in being shipped by the rocket had landed at the in, in space and been unloaded there and therefore up up, up there in space no longer required any so the copper got to here and went oh neither rocket requires it so it just sat there clogging the place up and being untidy so that was a little bit unfortunate He's removed the old excess rocket silos from over here. Uh, just got some a, a few tanks of um, of rocket fuel, and they are virtually empty. Look at that, just, just running out, being drained by the pump here. Once that's gone, they can be removed, and then 
we've, we've tidied up this area so we've got some free space in here that we're probably never going to do anything with but um, still never mind it's, it's good for putting in combinators for programming <laughs> uh, he's put in some oops, rare metal uh, guns over next to the rare metal smeltery which I think is going to be about here uh, oh yes, here we go. There's a belt coming down here, bringing bringing the rare metals down to be loaded into the into into the cannons, and we've got a station that drops drops off the delivery cannon capsules. They can, so that then the rare metals can be shipped up up into Norvis. That was what I was talking about a few minutes ago. So that's good. He's going to need that. Right. So he said that the uh, the the. Uh, the low density structures, yes, this is what we were talking about earlier. There's, a, there's still a problem over here, and it turns out the issue is, as you can see, the lack of copper. So there's a little bit dribbling through up here, but it's being rapidly used up, and most of the machines are idling. So presumably that means, we do we have a shortage of copper up here? Yes, we do. So these, these warehouses are mostly empty. They're loading this train up as fast as they can, but it's not fast enough. So we seem to have a massive shortage of copper. That kind of surprises me, to be honest. I... I guess we've been shipping a lot of it up into space to be turned into uh, into memory cards, so maybe that's where a lot of it's gone. Um, also been shipping a lot of it up into space for other copper purposes, and probably making a lot of a, a lot of uh, circuits as well. So generally, we put in a massive load on the uh, on the copper system, and it just can't keep up. So we've got we have a sizable area here that is producing it. Um, We've got the lots and lots of all the copper ore flowing in, which we seem to have, we seem to have enough copper ore at least for the uh, for the rate that we're getting through processing it at the moment, and then that's being processed here. We've got we've got um, productivity modules through everywhere and speed modules to give it a bit of a speed boost there as well, um, and we've got a steady flow of ingots coming through, but it seems like it's just not enough. So um, yeah, a, another job at some point might be to expand this and start producing the uh, start producing copper a bit faster because that does seem to be a problem. It's a problem that's rippled through into lot into into uh, lots of other places, sort of a long way down the uh, down the, the the system. So um, yeah, we'll have to have to do something about that as well. So that's another another raw material we don't have enough of. I'll mention briefly in passing that Tristan's put in an additional holmium cannon on the um, uh, on uh, Njord, and that one's that one's shipping stuff out to the big tower of uh, silliness that's making all of the uh, all of the machines up up in Norbit. But you've seen that before, so I, I won't I won't go uh, cover that again in too much detail. You'll be probably glad to know. Um, and I think that brings us more or less to the end of the episode. I had a feeling there was something else I wanted to talk about, but I can't think what it would be. So I'll, I'll just move on to the uh, to the death counters. And this week we've uh, we only had the one death. That was um, Mark over here accidentally nuked himself in the face. Uh, nuking oneself in the face is extremely careless. But the way that usually happens is you're running around trying to trying to nuke the biters um, by hand rather than ha rather than using the artillery, and you accidentally don't spot one of these rocks, fire a rocket into it at point blank range. It ex there's a huge explosion and you die extremely messily. So, um, well done to Mark for that, and uh, and uh, fair play for pointing it pointing it out when the rest of us missed it. So he's got he's got his death marker on the map over here. Um, but don't worry, Mark. Mike is still well in the lead on the death count. <laughs> so I think that's everything I'm going to I have to tell you about today. So please make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already, and also check out the uh, stream sponsor. That's Trefoil.be. Use the code Lawrence Plays to get twenty percent off your um, game server hosting services. Uh, what else should I tell you about? Yes, so uh, Monday there will be another stream where we'll carry on and go through and fix some of the problems I've been talking about today. Maybe even all of them. Who knows? We might be really productive. Tuesday there is a, um, a, fa a Factorio video to come out for uh, non-supporters. Non uh, that was last week's supporter video. So if you want to see the videos a week early or if you don't want to see them a week late, depending on which way you look at it, make sure you're a channel supporter. Uh, there will be a stream on Wednesday uh, where I shall be uh, carrying on with XCOM and we shall see how that goes. <laughs> and then, of course, Thursday will be a GTA video if I've got any left. It's running a little bit low on those. And Friday, Saturday will be the, uh, the, the Factorio catch-up videos. So, as always, thank you very much for watching and I hope we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.